Hansa everyone, hello, hello, happy, uh, well, June, oh my gosh, it's already June, happy June 9th, um, and welcome to my home, um, I'm very excited to be able to share in a good way again, um, um, I just totally woke up from a nap, but I needed that, I got to wake up really early this morning to spend time with my great aunt, and even though it was kind of that social distancing thing, it was so wonderful to be able to see her and just to see the way that she kind of lit up to be able to see me and my mom. So that was really, really nice. Um, and I think it's really important to really acknowledge and honor our elders and our, our ancestors in a meaningful way. So um, I had a, a lot of reflection this weekend. I went to um, Two Sweats and it was really just a beautiful and humbling return to Mother Earth. And I've been thinking a lot about the protests that have been happening and all that's been going on around the world. And um, I haven't been present uh, like I normally am at those uh, events, at those protests and, you know, supporting the community in that way. But I felt like I was supporting community by bringing those prayers into the lodge with me. And so um, I think that was really, really beautiful and really, really important. Hi, Kimmy. And um, so I just wanted to, of course, start like I do every week by acknowledging the land upon which we stand. So this uh, is the home, of course, of the Treaty 7 people, the home of the Blackfoot of Siksika, Gainai, and Bagani, the Sarsitane, uh, Kalinsotsana, and the Stony Nakoda from Morley, which includes Jinnaki, Bearspot, and Wesley First Nations. We're also walking in the footsteps of Métis Region 3, which is why I probably wear my Métis sash tag, because that bridge between Indigenous and non-Indigenous culture. Um, I acknowledge the families that have been here for thousands upon thousands of generations. When I was uh, at the lodge, it was really powerful. It was powerful to be connected to the earth in that way and really be within Mother Earth. Um, there's something very magical about Mohenstis, which is this area um, in Blackfoot, which means elbow. It's where the Bow River and the Elbow River come together, but there's this power that comes together with the confluence of the river. And that sense of community, that sense of belonging that it kind of creates, it's so uh, stunning and so beautiful and so wonderful. And I felt so embraced by it over the weekend. So, um, and I just wanted to kind of share that energy. And I was thinking a lot about protocol because in this area, this is a, a traditionally Blackfoot territory and Blackfoot have invited, uh, so it's not Blackfoot have invited the Stony Nakoda to be here um, in their traditional territories and share it in that way. And when I was there, it was all of these um, different people sharing their teachings, sharing their prayers, sharing all of these things. And that's truly what it should be about. It should be about sharing, you know, sharing our stories and sharing our understandings and sharing our different viewpoints and coming together to really um, nurture and support each other. Uh, and that's that sense and that energy that we get from this territory that we get from, you know, those traditional teachings and this traditional land. And even though my family's not from here, um, I'm not from Calgary originally. Uh, I was actually born in Edmonton in an old residential school hospital, but uh, I am from Muskeg Lake and that's in Saskatchewan. It's kind of like north sort of central Saskatchewan and um, it's beautiful whenever I go back there and I connect to the land out there it's beautiful as well and it's just a different energy it's a different way of being um, being home versus being somewhere where you're creating a home is a very very different atmosphere it's a different feeling um, and when um, I was there I remember after the sweat what was really really powerful is um, it was really really hot the first day and it was so beautiful I love the heat. I used to sweat in Arizona, so heat doesn't bug me. I <laughs> love it, love it, love it hot. And so after I left the lodge, um, I remember sitting to my with my back to the remaining fire, and I felt like the whole, my whole back was just pulsing. And um, I just sat there for what seemed like, you know, at least 10 to 15 minutes, just feeling my back pulsing and listening to the birds and listening to the wind through the trees and listening to some of the other animals chatter away and I remember feeling the sense of peace and the sense of belonging in this place and then the pulsing it felt like um, the grandmother drum must feel when you know warriors would be playing the drum to be able to come to an understanding and so the story of the drum is um, you know when when the grandmother drum was created there were many many different people that were at war um, and there are many different stories about the drum and how it was created. 
but there was a grandmother who watched over many of the nations and she watched them rise and fall she was a great grandmother and she knew many of the people in many of the nations and she didn't want them to fight anymore because they were just hurting each other and killing each other off and she said no this is unacceptable we have to come together and share we need each other and so she brought the strongest warriors from all of the different nations together and she gave them each um, a big willow branch so you've probably seen the cattails so those cattails um, and this is why many of our sticks, uh, our drumsticks and our um, mallets do look like cattails. But she gave it to each of the warriors. And she said, I would like you to be warriors with your hearts and with your words and with your spirit. And so she invited them all into a circle. And she stood in the center of the circle. And then she crouched down and put herself into a ball. And she said, as you speak, I would like you to strike my back. And so... They did this and of course um, cattails are very soft and spongy so it didn't hurt at first but then as they started to share their words and share their thoughts and share their stories and share their anger and frustration it got harder and harder but then they realized what they were doing to the grandmother and so they got softer and they showed respect to the grandmother respect to their words and there became this pulse there became this rhythm this drum beat and grandmother slowly became the grandmother drum and she invited all of the nations and they all continued to play. And as they did, they created music together. They created song together. They created this pulse and sound where they spoke together, not fought, but spoke. And as they did, it created peace among all of the people of those nations. And so whenever we would have a disagreement, we would go sit at the mother drum and we would have those conversations with those songs, with our words, with our spirits, and with our hearts around Grandmother Drum. And that's how I felt with that pulsing of the back, that pulsing of the different nations coming together to share those stories and share those songs. And I felt like I was carrying that energy in with me. And it gave me a sense of, of peace, a sense of hope for all that we're going through. This is just those pulses. When a baby's born, they're, I mean, well, trust me, I've had two kids, but it's that sense of that chaos and destruction and that sense of pain and all of that labor that you're working so hard to have this child. And after all of that pain and all of that messiness and hurt and tears and yelling, lots of yelling, I was making coherent sentences out of nothing but curse words with my first son. But after all of that, you have this beautiful child. You have a new life you have a new opportunity and that's what i feel now i feel like that pulse it was that reminder of we're going through a new phase we're going through you know that chaos that storm before the new dawn and um it gave me a sense of hope and a peace and it was just really really beautiful so i thought i would share that today uh and so to welcome everybody again into the circle um i wanted to share of course the Cree welcome song Traditionally, when we share songs, we sing in rounds of four, down to the four directions of the medicine wheel. But this song is a little bit different. We actually sing it in rounds of three. And that's to keep the circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle today. Because in a circle, we're all connected. There's no beginning. There's no end. No one is greater or less than anyone else in the circle, just like in the hoop of life. So it teaches us to honor each other for those differences. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to agree 100% of the time. But it's important to acknowledge that everyone has a place. Everybody has a space in our community. Everybody has different things that they bring to the table, you know, whether it be um, an outlook of how to get things done from a financial or a mental perspective or like actually building things physically or people who are really wonderful at cleaning. Honestly, I really need that help. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not the most cleaner. Uh, and I had a lady that would come in once a week, or not once a week, sorry, once a month, and it would just motivate me to maintain that for the month, and then I would lose that motivation. But I need her. I miss her. She was wonderful, and she takes Calgary dollars. We'll talk about that later. Um, but it was a really beautiful way of seeing how all of these different bits and pieces of our community, they work together in harmony. And that's what this song is about. It's about acknowledging all of those people in our community, whether we spend time with them or not, whether we know them deeply or not, everyone contributes to that circle. Everybody contributes to the way that our community functions, our community works, our world works. We're all interconnected. When we say all my relations, 
It's because we're all related. The standing people, which are the trees, were related. You know, the flying people, the birds were related. The crawlers, which are the bugs, were related to them. You know, the mountains, those are our grandmothers and grandfathers that are watching over us. Um, the water, those are, those are our relations as well. Not only our physical family as well. And so it reminds us, oh, of course, the four-leggeds, how could I ever forget them? I have two fuzzy four-leggeds running around my house that remind me of them. <laughs> and so it does remind us that everything is important in that circle. And if we lose one thing in that circle, one spirit, one person, uh, one animal even in that circle, we're missing a huge reservoir of knowledge that we need to access as a whole. Um, and so this song, it, it teaches us that. It teaches us about respecting and honoring everyone within the circle. Uh, it teaches us about honoring and respecting our place in the circle and not to compare ourselves to others because we need, we need everyone. We need to balance. And we have different things to share as well as different things to learn. Um, and it's not about coming from a place of ego, but it's about coming from a place of spirit because that's where your peace lies. And so Mia Sin, which is the Cree welcome song, when we sing it in three rounds, it's to keep that circle open and welcoming so everyone completes the circle. So whether you um, come in later or whether you leave early, it doesn't matter. There's no stopping and going. It just continues, just like that circle to, continues to going on and on and on. This song welcomes anyone to come in and out at any time. And so this is why it's really important to start things like that. And that's also really important to acknowledge the land and the relationship that we have to it and the relationship that we have to each other and that responsibility. Um, and so Mia Sin, which is the Cree welcome song. It's from the Nataha family from Sturgeon Lake Cree Nation in Saskatchewan. Um, and they're in, um, I just thank them for keeping this song alive and the story alive. Because for many generations we couldn't. We couldn't speak our languages, uh, we couldn't share our stories, we couldn't share our songs. And so the fact that these remain, it shows exactly how powerful and how necessary those teachings are. And so um, when I sing it, I honor that family. So Mia Sin, it doesn't just mean welcome, it also means beautiful. I'm going to stand up to sing it. Mia sin, mia sin, So um, I've been thinking a lot about my family and relations, and um, it's interesting, well, I uh, say as a gray eyes from this gig, like I'm related to a lot of people, but um, it was nice to be able to spend time with my family today. So, uh, I mean, I spend time with everybody in my household, my family here all the time, and sometimes we're like, oh, I just don't want to see my parents anymore. 
little more. So I'm glad that we have spaces kind of allocated for people to hang out so we don't make each other too crazy. Um, but it was nice to see my mom. And um, just because I know that uh, we've gone through some hard times, me and my mom together. And the fact that we have recovered and we've rebuilt our relationship is so, so important. And then with COVID kind of uh, separating everybody, um, to not have that time to see her, um, especially on Mother's Day, that was really difficult because usually we go out for brunch on Mother's Day. It was a big thing. Um, and one of the only times that all of the women in our family would get together and actually get along because, you know, free food. So <laughs> that is the trick to family love, free food, apparently. Uh, but it was beautiful to be able to just spend the time with her and go for a brunch with her and then go to visit auntie together. Um, it was just so lovely to see that kind of matriarchal relationship that we all have together, um, that maternal relationship that we have, you know, as, you know, mothers and um, my auntie's a grandmother, but she hasn't seen her grandchildren because they're all down in the States. And so she's very, very worried about them. But uh, it was so nice to just have that energy. And I know a lot of times people talk to me, they're like, oh, how's your mom? Because if they know me, they probably know my mom or vice versa. And then when they find out we're related, they're like, what? So <laughs> uh, it was just really lovely to be able to see her and spend time. And I think it's really important to touch base with the ones that we love. Um, I hadn't seen my auntie in a really long time just because I was I was so busy. I was so busy before, you know, doing uh, going into schools and um, sharing and performing and presenting, and I did not make time for what was important, which was family. And this has made me slow down and really reevaluate where I want to be and what I want to learn and the things that I want to connect with. And so um, my auntie, as she gets older, sometimes when she gets tired, she slips into Cree. Um, like, and that's my perfect opportunity to learn. I really, really want to learn uh, how to speak my traditional language because um, <laughs> that was something that was taken away from us. Um, and so I was really, really thankful uh, for that time um, to, to spend with her. And I'm looking forward to spending more time with her, uh, not across the table, but you know, to actually physically hug her and be with her and learn these words with her. Um, I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and so I sang the uh, uh, cre creation song, the creator song for her. And it was funny because I'd never I, I'd never sang the song for her before. And she sang along and she's like, I know this song, my dear. I know this song, my girl. It was amazing. Um, and because I didn't even get it from anybody. At, it wasn't shared with me from anybody from my reserve. And so it was beautiful to think of how far you know, our songs travel and the different people and the different, um, you know, messengers, I say, that, that will carry these songs forward and just the energy that that maintains is so, so important. So we have to really support our knowledge keepers and our elders and, you know, our song carriers. And it's really, really lovely. Um, yeah, and it really hit home today when I was sharing that song and my auntie was singing how just, how special our songs are and how present they are and how meaningful they are. And so I'm going to share that song just because I've been talking about it. And so um, the creator song just reminds us that we're all connected. You know, we say all my relations because everybody's related. It honors, you know, the trees and the plants and the four leggeds and the flyers and everyone, everyone in our circle. It reminds us that we're part of creation. And this is why it's important just to honor and respect um, what our place is in that community and honor and respect the world. Um, and Mother Earth, as well as Creator, because there's a reason we're here, and we have to figure out what that reason is. And so, um, oh yeah, 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 that my mom. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the Creator song. And I thank my friend Elizabeth uh, for share or um, Night Sun for sharing this song.
So um, the reason they do that call at the end um, is I call for the four directions. So I honor, you know, our, our grandmothers and grandfathers in each of the directions. I honor grandmother, um, grandfather's son in the east. I honor grandmother moon in the west and the balance that they give to each other, that reflection that they give to each other. Um, I honor Mother Earth and I honor Creator, and so I honor that balance there too. And so it's important to honor all four directions. And speaking of which, um, I always lay all four directions of my medicines out when I spudge um, because it's important. It's important to honor all of those different medicines, all of the teachings of the medicines and what they bring. And so even if you're not using all of the medicines within the smudge, you're still inviting that energy in uh, because the smudge bowl itself is all four directions. So um, I have a sword in here, but the bowl itself is that's um, that feminine energy. So that's our emotions. That's Mother Earth. That's the water because it holds us. That's why usually we use a shell or a bowl or sometimes um, a river rock that's been hollowed out naturally. But there's many different things that we can use to hold our medicines. As soon as we put the medicine in the bowl, which I will be doing soon, um, that represents the earth. And so because all of those medicines come from the earth. And when we're done burning it, all of those ashes go back into the earth, or we can use them for different things, but they're usually uh, our way to ground. So it's really important to honor that earth medicine that we put in the bowl. Um, then, of course, we have uh, the, well, we light it on a fire, and that fire is, it's our mind medicine. It's that masculine medicine. It's, you know, that thought process, and it's of course fire that burns and then all of the smoke is our prayers going up to creator so it's it's that air medicine it's um, the medicine that we have of creation and it teaches us that we have to honor the air all around us so even though we don't see it we know it's there because we breathe that's why it's important to have that breath ceremony every morning when you wake up just take a deep breath because it just grounds you, it pulls you back into your body, and it reminds you how sacred you are and how sacred that breath is. Because that breath is the first breath that Creator ever sent out to the universe. That big bang, what that was, it was a big breath. And that gave life, it gave light, it gave um, everything to creation, and that was just a breath. And so um, it reminds us that we're still breathing that sacred breath, and that's within us. And that's what gives us our life, our essence, our being. And so all four of those elements in the smudge bowl. And so this is why it's important to lay them all out as well. And so um, today we're only smudging with sage because I only smudge with sage unless I'm in the specific ceremony. Uh, but sage being the women's medicine, oops, apparently a medicine that wants to run away today. Um, it's, it's good to use at any time. There's some teachings that say if you are on your moon time, don't smudge because you're very, very strong when you're on your moon time. You're very powerful. And um, I leave that up to you. Um, it's really important if you're going into a mixed ceremony um, to step away. Just if you're on your moon time, because you're already going through a ceremony, so why double up? Uh, also, your energy is really, really strong. And if there are spirits that need to help other people, they'll, they'll come talk to you to get you to help the other people because you can hear them more clearly. And so it reminds <laughs> us like sometimes we just need to take a step back and uh, the people that need to pray in their way need to pray. And so, um, same with sweet grass. My teaching around sweet grass is because it's a men's medicine. When we're on our moon time, um, our women's medicine is it's really, really strong. And so we might overwhelm that medicine. So out of respect for other people, we won't smudge with um, their sweet grass. Uh, if it's our own personal braid of sweet grass, that's our medicine. So we can use it at any time. But that being said, hello everyone. Who is that? I'm just doing so when I um, put the sage leaves in I go crunch 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 that's a creek crunch and then once they're all squished together I do this it's a black foot roll so it's a good balance it's a good balance and a good way to keep your medicines burning all right and then, so when we light our medicines um, there's no right or wrong way to smudge it's whatever feels good to you and oh um some people prefer to take their jewelry off. I'm really excited about my jewelry right now. So uh, these earrings um, I wore religiously for almost five years, and then I lost one of my earrings. And for, for two years, it was gone. And I was saving the other one just so I could make a, a necklace or something out of it. But then the other day when I was cleaning, um, my son had lost something. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll just 
take apart the couch. So I kind of dug in there and I found it. And I was so excited. I know I kind of diverged, but I was like, okay, well, I did really good work when I was wearing these earrings before. It was during Idle No More that I was wearing them all the time and they gave me the strength. Um, and I'm like, well, I guess it's it's time to get back to work. So <laughs> that was what I took it as. Um, but it was beautiful. It was a beautiful gift to be able to find that again. All right. So when we light our medicines, um, there's no right or wrong way to smudge. It's whatever feels good to you. Oh, but the reason we take our jewelry off is because um, metal holds energy and you don't want... You don't want to mess with that energy. You want to get rid of the things that you don't need and bring in the things that you do need. And you need space for the good stuff to come in. So that's why you push all the bad stuff out. And the stuff that's not productive. Awesome. And you'll notice I'm fanning it with my hand. I never blow on it because our breath is our life and our life is precious. We don't waste that for anybody. All right. So the first thing I do is I just wash my hands in it. And like I said, there's no right or wrong way to smudge. It's whatever feels good to you. So you're gonna find the way that works for you and that's what's important. Um, because what smudge is, it's, it's cleaning, it's praying, it's getting rid of the things you don't need and pulling in the things that you do need. It's asking for the things that you need. Um, there, I love the elder shared a story of um, girls that she had met, young girls, and, and they had never prayed before. And so when she said, okay, we'll take this tobacco and go and pray, they were like, we don't know how to pray, auntie. And she said, well, uh, do you know how to make a wish? And they said, well, yeah. She's like, that's all prayer is. It's making a wish. It's setting that intention. And so there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's asking for what you need from the universe, not for what you don't need. So you focus on those positive things. You focus on those good things. And you focus on really honoring yourself and your place. But be specific. If you ask for patience, you're going to get a lot of learnings for patience. <laughs> so the first thing I do is I clean my hands. Just so anything I'm carrying, I get rid of. I bring it over my body four times to honor the four directions in my body. I smudge my mind so I can think clearly. I can learn from every person that crosses my path. So I can remember to think with my heart as well as my mind. I smudge my eyes so I can see clearly and be open to see all of the beauty that surrounds me. I smudge my ears so I can remember to speak twice, or listen twice as much as I speak. I have two ears and one mouth for a reason, but also so I can be open to hear all of the messages that Creator sends me, and be open to hear all of the messages through people. This is why we have people in our path, is to learn different things from them. So look at every person you meet as an opportunity to learn something. Touch my nose so I smell danger and cookies. Switch my mouth so I speak true and kind words that are helpful. Um, I always ask myself, is it truthful? Is it helpful? Is it kind? Is it respectful? If it's none of those things, it's not in line with the 17 genius, so don't say it, don't do it. Switch my throat because I'm very thankful for my voice this lifetime. I give voice to the voiceless as an activist, as a singer. Um, my gift and I'm very very thankful for that gift we need to honor the gifts that we have and remind ourselves that that's why creator put us here to share those gifts because if we keep them to ourselves nobody will ever know I smudge my lungs so I breathe good clean air and honor the breath that resides within me that sacred breath I smudge my heart so I can remember to be kind and compassionate and show unconditional love to all of those around me friends, my family, strangers that I haven't met, but also to remember to love myself and be gentle with myself. I smudge my stomach so all of the food that I eat this day will nourish my body. I smudge my womanhood because I'm very thankful to be a woman and a mother in this time. Uh, even as a two-spirit woman, I still honor the body that I was gifted, um, even though I occupy both those energies. Um, I honor the fact that I am a mother. And that was um, the gift that the Creator had given me. I smudge my shoulders and my back so I can remember to carry all of those burdens and all of the responsibilities that Creator gifted me with grace and humility and honor them 
for all the gifts that they are. I'm not really burdens and responsibilities, and that's a gift. I stretch my arms and my hands so I can do the good work that creators put me here to do. Very thankful um, for my hands as a drum maker, as an artist. Um, I'm in the process of <laughs> scanning a hide and um, we are going to be making a whole bunch of drums next week for wonderful, wonderful people who are waiting for them. So I'm very excited for that opportunity to not only be able to skin the hide myself, but be able to make the drum myself. So there's going to be something very special about those drums. I'm very thankful for my hands for that. I smudge my legs so I can remember to stand tall and walk this red road in a good way. And I smudge my feet. So I remember to stay grounded and connected to Mother Earth, treading lightly upon her, honoring her with every step. Then if there's anywhere else that you need a little extra help, a little extra love. So um, my back's a little sore from being in this hut. My hips are always sore, so I always smudge those. But other than that, I feel amazing. So. Um, and then anywhere else that you want to send a little bit of extra love to, whether it be um, someone that you know, maybe people that you don't know, um, families that you know are having a hard time, you just send that love and appreciation to them and send that energy and that intent to them because that's important. It's really important to be able to share what we have. All right. And then when you're done, you just say hi, hi, or miigwech, or merci, or grazia, or xie xie, or however you say thank you in your language. I need to learn how to say thank you in many other languages because then it would be a lot easier. And then when you're done, you're done. So, um, being said, I wanted to share oops, um, a beautiful story. So, um, when I was at the sweat, uh, after the sweat, uh, the elders shared a story. And I knew this story. I've heard this story before. And it's really interesting how um, the things are slightly different in, in, in different stories from different uh from different teachings and different traditions. And so um, I had told the story about uh, you know, the creation story, how the muskrat had dove down and got the earth and the turtle carried it on her back. And so uh, this is kind of like the prequel. So after um, you know the earth was built and the animals were you know repopulating and spreading out all over the earth, creator came uh, and asked uh, all of the animals um, what some of their responsibilities were and what they hoped to share, uh, but also ask them, you know, uh, a little bit about us and warn them about us as two-legged, what we needed to learn, how we needed to learn, um, and some of the sacrifices that they would have to make. And so the animals were so kind and so humbled because when they came to the earth, they already knew what their purpose was. They knew that their purpose was to learn and to grow and to connect with the earth and to honor each other. So they got that. We didn't, we didn't learn that. <laughs> and so um, it was really important for the animals to be able to understand and be gentle with us and for the plants to be gentle with us as well um, and really guide us on that path. Uh, and Creator said, even though we didn't have that gift of insight, we didn't know who we were, he was gonna give us something very, very sacred, very, very special. He was gonna give us a spirit. And he'd asked, he gathered the animals, this huge just council and said, okay, well, everyone knows that what their spirit is because that's exactly what they are as animals. And they said, but these two-legged, their spirit is separate because they have to uncover and discover their spirit. And so where will we hide the spirit so they can learn it and they can connect with it? Uh, and then many of the animals had so, so, so many ideas. So the mole was like, well, we could bury it and, and then they would have to dig for it. And creator said, no, no, we shouldn't bury it because they will create machines as they get older and they will uncover it quite easily. So that won't work. Um, and then the surgeon was like, well, I could swim as deeply as I can. And, you know, I could, I could bury it at the bottom of the ocean. And the creator thought about it for a moment and said, the ocean is quite deep, but no, they will create things and be able to reach it quite, quite easily. And so all of the animals thought and chattered to each other again. And then the eagle said, well, I could soar up to the highest peak and like put it up there, put their spirits up there. 
And Corrina said, no, no, they're going to learn how to climb those mountains. They're going to learn how to soar in those peaks, uh, soar up to those peaks, and they'll be able to uncover their spirit quite easily. And um, the eagle said, what about in the clouds? I could fly up to the clouds and we could leave them in the air in the clouds. And Corrina said, no, they're going to create machines so that they can touch the sky just like the birds. So that's not a good place for their spirit either. They have to work for it. And, you know, the working ones would have to discover it. And so all of the animals thought and thought and thought. And the tiny mouse came forward and said, I have a wonderful idea, Corita. And Corita said, what's that, Mr. Mouse, or Mrs. Mouse? <laughs> and the mouse said, why don't we give them their spirits, but hide it inside them? So they have to learn ceremony and they have to learn themselves to uncover it. And Creator thought this was the perfect idea. And so us two leggeds were born with our spirits within us, but we need ceremony to deeply connect to our spirits. And so it's really important that we connect and have that breath and have that ceremony every day to be able to understand and connect to the world around us, but to connect to ourselves. And so that's what songs are, that's what stories are. It's our way of sharing those little bits and pieces of spirit wherever we go. Um, oral storytelling is so important for that, and it's so important to like deeply connect with each other in that way too. And so that's what that story teaches us. Uh, so um, I wanted to share another song. Of course, I like to share the healing song, but um, this song is the Raven song. So I was just thinking about the Raven a lot lately, and as I was driving out, um, and I was uh, there on the land in the swim lounge, I could hear the Raven just <laughs> doing his thing. And it just reminded me of that humility that we all have to carry with us and the ability to laugh at ourselves. And uh, even though times are really, really tough to really reflect on um, you know, why and what's brought us to this point, because the Raven is all about reflection, is all about uh, you know, learning <laughs> you know, our mistakes and moving forward from them and laughing at ourselves. It's important to laugh at ourselves. And uh, so this song was running through my mind whenever I would hear the Raven. Um, and so I want to share the Raven song. Uh, the Raven song is, um, it's about the Raven story. So I'm going to just grab my water here. So, and the Raven, of course, learned all about humility um, because he lost all of that beautiful color um, in his feathers because he was taking himself too seriously, making other people feel bad, comparing himself to others. And it teaches us not to do that teaches us to really be proud of what we have and be happy with what we have because if we lose sight of that we might lose it all together and so the raven had to learn that the hard way and he had to learn how to be humble and how to appreciate what he had but then he became the trickster because you know if you get a really good trick played on you sometimes you gotta return the favor so this is the raven song <laughs> Hey, uh, oh, hey, uh, 
you know, it's so humbling and happy, and I love that song. It's also really, really catchy. Um, but I want to talk a little bit about protocol because I think that's really important. And sometimes I think I'm, I forget about it because I'm such, I'm such a sharer. I love to share, um, and I just in the hope that you know I can help somebody or I can make somebody stay a little bit brighter or I can share something with them that will actually guide them on their path. That's really, really important to me. Um, but I know that there's an importance to, to protocol as well. Uh, and I'm always reminded of it specifically in Treaty 7 territory just because, uh, you know, the protocol is such a sacred aspect of everything that we do with our elders. We always give the elders something, you know, as a gift, uh, whether it be something uh, like a denomination of money or whether it be uh, medicine or whether it be cloth or whether it be blankets or food or other things. But we always gift something in return for that knowledge, in return for that medicine, in return for that, those um, those ceremonies and those teachings that are shared. And I think that's important, right? There's always has to be an exchange. And sometimes I think we forget when we're online about that exchange, about that energy exchange, that those people that are online that are sharing these things are actually putting that energy out there. They're putting those, um, you know, those teachings out there, they're putting those things out there. And sometimes we, we so readily consume, consume, consume that we forget that there, there needs to be some re reciprocation, whether it be um, sharing with other people or doing other things. And so I was really reminded of that and it kind of struck me. And I've always felt really odd asking for things. Um, just my whole life, I've always felt like, well, I just have to give and give and give and give, which has gotten me into some really sticky uh, relationship situations, that's for darn sure. Uh, that's why I'm perpetually single. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but it really did strike me when I was speaking to the elder about, you know, how important protocol is. Um, and how we can't be afraid to ask for protocol. And so uh, at the end of this video, I'm gonna um, post a link. So if you feel like sharing um, anything financially, that would be awesome. Um, just because I know that with the with everything with the lockdown, um, I haven't really been working as much as I used to. I haven't been in schools, obviously, because schools are done. Um, but it, it hasn't really been that much of a struggle because I made sure that I had a, something set aside just because I have been so low before that I never wanted to experience that again. Uh, but of course, the further we go into it, um, the more our reserves tend to dry up, so to speak. Um, and so uh, I will definitely put that link there. If anybody wanted to share protocol, I would really, really appreciate it. I know my kids would really appreciate it. Um, but hi, hi, thank you for that. Uh, to just heal everybody and heal like what we're going through in the world right now. I've been having like a lot of dreams of, um, well, Animal Crossing, but that's another thing entirely. I'm playing way too many video games, uh, but uh, about change, like changing experiences. So usually when I see uh, tornadoes in my dreams, those that's change. That's big changes that are happening all around us, um, throughout our communities, throughout the world. I will see, you know, these clat cataclysmic <laughs> events. Usually it's like flooding or um, yeah, earthquakes or tornadoes. I've been having a lot of tornado dreams yesterday. I think it was just a lot of things about like the sky turning black, but then of course that sun coming out afterwards, and that reminder that things are gonna get hard, but that's okay because they're gonna get better too. Um, and so uh, this song, Healing Song, is one of those songs that I sing, I sing daily. I sing daily for, um, for the healing of my family. I sing daily for the healing of my friends. I sing daily for the healing of the world, uh, for our different communities. Everyone's struggling with something, and I think it's really important to not judge them for the struggles that they're going through, but just help them along that path. That doesn't mean take on that responsibility of their healing, because if they don't want to heal, that's not your responsibility. They need to figure that out for themselves. But to be there for those moments when they do need, you know, a hug or a kind word, or support or energy or food <laughs> you know there's been so many times when i knew people were going through their healing journey um and just bringing them food it's the same thing when people are fasting were you eating and drinking for them uh, and um there's something about fasting which is really really sacred in our culture when you're fasting not only are you carrying your own prayers and your own stuff in with you but there's all of these um you know ancestors that are around you there's all of these spirits that are around you that uh you know take your prayers as well and um even though our bodies are struggling in those moments our spirits are thriving and this is why 
And when we fast, we don't have water. We have a four day fast and there's no water within that four days, um, which I mean, usually scientifically, if you don't have water for four days, uh, for three days, you die. Uh, but there's something different within um, those fasting ceremonies because there's, there's this different energy and you can feel it when people are drinking for you and when people are eating for you um, and when people are sending you that energy you can feel it you really can <laughs> and um, I remember when I was fasting one time I got this just I felt like I was on a sugar rush or uh, it was my third day and yeah I just felt like I was on a sugar rush and I just got I was motivated and I got all of this like extra wood and I was going crazy and um, later on after I passed I'd, I'd asked you know my family so you eat and drink for me and uh, I said yes <laughs> and then one of my friends was like I think I ate an entire cheesecake for you and I'm like oh that's the sugar buzz so <laughs> it was quite funny um, but it's uh, this song just reminds me of that healing power that we have with each other and how we can share that energy with each other and so it's called the crying song or the wailing song because there's so much healing power in our tears but um, it's really about just honoring and letting that energy go and knowing that sometimes we have a surplus of energy so we can share that we can share that with other people with other nations with other communities um you know with individuals but also the broader world around us with mother earth so she can channel that energy to where it needs to go um but that's what this song really captures and so we sing it of course in four rounds to honor the four directions of the medicine wheel but the third round we stop drumming and in that round, it invites us to really pray and reflect on, um, you know, the, the healing that we need in our own lives, the healing that the world around us needs, that those people that we're praying for need. Um, it reminds us of just like taking that time and then that stillness to really reflect and heal, heal internally, heal externally, heal all aspects of our being, our mind, our physical body, our heart, and our spirit that fuels the whole thing, because that's what it is. It's a balance. This is why we wear the, the medicine wheel, because it's a balance. We have to balance everything within us. This is why I kind of laugh at the term holistic medicine, but it's true. It's a whole. We're a whole being. We're a whole person, and you can't treat bits and pieces of it. We have to treat the whole being, and that's what this song reminds us of, treating everything, everyone in our community, everyone in our circle, our entire being, you know, and really bringing everything in. Um, and so it's also uh, beautiful because when that drum beat comes in, that last drum beat, it's really just like this, <gasps> this breath that just shoots all of that energy and all of those prayers, all of those intentions and wishes and dreams and hopes into the universe. And so that creator, God, Allah, Buddha, whatever you believe in, because everybody prays to something or someone, um, and it's it's not right or wrong it's just different it's about channeling it in a good way uh and it's about the intention that you put behind anything and so uh that's it's the healing song you can have a little sip of water awesome <coughs>
the ancestors from all the winds of the four directions that guide us on our path. Thank you to all the revelations. Um, I know last week I was trying to remember a song and think of a song and share that song, which is um, the, it's like a farewell song. Uh, it's just really about movement and it's about honoring, you know, um, sometimes moving forward, sometimes moving on, but always remembering what's brought us and pushed us there. It's very similar to um, Kikima Beso, which is the, um, the Thunderbird song, because the Thunderbird teaches us that too. But the Thunderbird's more about spirit that kind of puts us on the right path and kicks us in our butt and being like, nah, -uh, don't be there. Don't get out of that rut. Just don't spend your time there. Um, and this song, um, it always reminds me of uh, my, my elder Sharon. And I always say that if it's not meant to be shared, it won't be shared. And so sometimes I'll think of it all day, and then when I go to share it, it won't be there anymore. So <laughs> it's gonna happen right now. Just kidding. <laughs> um, but it's just, it's this, it's the intention I think that you put into everything that you do. And so by a lot of times when people are hearing the songs, they can feel the intention of the song. Um, and with this song, it's feeling that intention of, you know, moving forward, moving on, um, growing, uh, but never forgetting where you've come from, never forgetting your roots, um, and really what's led you to this moment. Oops. <clears throat> I have a skull cap, and there's a very interesting story about the skull cap. Um, so, for a really long time, in my youth, I had a really hard time um, fitting in. And the only place I tended to fit in was at raves, of all things. Yes, I was a raver kid, but it was the beat, the drum uh, that, that was there, uh, and just the moving, and the connection, the sense of community that I had there. Um, I actually never <laughs> did the drugs when I was there because it was just that connection that I had to the music and to, the, to dancing and to the people that truly was my healing. It was my way of grounding. I was meeting people that were from all of these different places all in their lives. And um, we were always the outcasts and we felt so connected and we actually held a sense of community there. And my biggest sense of community was with the Sublink community, um, uh, my friend Lucy, who is an amazing DJ, so she would throw these uh, parties, and they were called res. And it was funny because whenever I went to it, I always felt like I was going home, just like when I went to my actual res, I always felt like I was coming home. So <laughs> it was a really interesting juxtaposition, but I'd been volunteering for her year after year since uh, 1992. And so, um, and she always sold cups so that we, we weren't wasting, you know, more water bottles. We always encouraged people just to refill things, so we would go through coffee just to make sure that they were fueled in a healthy way or food or different things. And it was really about caregiving for people within the community. Um, but I always volunteered there. And that's where this cup came from, is uh, we would always have these cups on hand for people who wanted to buy a cup and then just refill it throughout the night. And so I still have these cups. They're like so old, but they remind me of that sense of community and making community no matter where you are, building community no matter, no matter where you are. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try and remember this song. But right now the mother song is the only song that's popped into my head. So I'm gonna sing the mother song because it's the only one that's coming. <laughs>
that whole that song that I keep intending on sharing, it's not ready. It's not ready to be shared yet. And it's funny how that that happens because I've been singing it all day, and now it's it's not here. It's not with me. So it's not meant to be. Not yet, but it will come. It will come uh, as long as um, you know. Just it'll come. It'll come. And I think it's really important to honor that and not force things. Sometimes you just have to speak from your heart and from your spirit. Um, and those first things that just come out, know that they're meant to be shared. Um, and it's really about just honoring that journey and honoring that energy um, that we can share with the world around us. And so um, thank you again. It's been, um, I love sharing. Uh, I do, do, do miss, you know, having physical people here to share with uh, and hugs. Oh my gosh, when I hugged my mom today, my gosh, it was so good. Uh, so I think sometimes we forget how important hugs are. She has a really hilarious meme on her uh, Facebook page that says, um, pray for the huggers. <laughs> because it's really difficult for the huggers like me and my mom not to be able to hug people. Um, but we're sending that virtual hug out there. Um, and all of that love and all of that appreciation to everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, feel free to share uh, if there's something that you need to hear. Yeah, you'll hear it. And it's just really about acknowledging and honoring that. So, um, yeah, which I guess I will see you next week. Hi, hi. Ooh. Bye. Love to everyone.